the Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. This is Mark Hyde. And Chris Fuller. And on today's episode of Real Talk Christian, we are doing an Ask RTC Anything. We got questions from you listeners, and we're going to answer them off the cuff, no prep. Fuller, you ready, bro? Let's go. Fuller. What's up, Mark? Welcome back, my friend. What's up, buddy? Dude, happy cookie night. Dude, it is cookie fantastic day. You know, I feel like when we're Real Talk Christian Podcast, yeah. we're, 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 we're a conversation show. We're not just an interview show. I feel like everyone should have some cookies and some, and Break, some coffee when it's time for our Break RTC. out the cookies you know? and coffee. Because it's, it's it, the show was designed around Starbucks. You know, we'd go to Starbucks. We would chit-chat over coffee. Right. Over, well, we never did. Why did we not do cake pops? I did the banana nut bread once. We did do, yeah, yeah, you did do the banana nut bread. And then we were there long enough that one time where they kept walking around with samples. Yeah. That was right? a good day. <laughs> that was a good day. But, oh, fun fact, though. I'm going gonna, gonna to lead the show with a fun fact. Do it, bro. I'm so, going to eat a cookie. So Starbucks, at time of recording, just reopened, right? And mm-hmm. so, but, but it's just the drive through And if you do mobile order, you go to the door, you pick it up, you can't go inside. I am two for two for the baristas knowing who I am at the speaker. That is sad. But I'll order it, and then they're like, okay, who's the order? I'll be like, oh, this is Mark. And one person was like, oh, aren't you uh, one of the former baristas? Aren't you her pastor friend? I said, yep, that's me. And then the other one was like, um, like uh, even, oh, actually, in my, no, I'm two for three. Because the first one, I ordered it, and the person was like, is this Mark? And I'm like, hi, Lily. Yeah, it is Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I know your voice, too. So I apparently I have a Starbucks problem. That, that's all right. So, Janiel and I, on our anniversary this last weekend, went to Starbucks. Or not Happy Starbucks. anniversary. We went to Sonic. We went to Sonic to get some slushies for me and the kids. And Happy hour or no happy hour? Happy hour. Oh, nice. Right at the cusp of the end. So, we get there, and we pay, and the girl that is giving us our drinks goes, hey, I know you. I go to church with you. And I'm like, I can't recognize her because she's got a mask on. I'm like, Kyla. Is that who it is? Carla Castro. Yep. There you go. So she works at Sonic. I was asking her, I'm like, why don't you do the roller skates like everybody else? She goes, because I don't want to like die. die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but I just thought it was funny. I was like, oh, okay. I don't recognize who you are with the mask on, but whatever. Do you, okay. So are you good with names? No. Okay. Cause people walk up to me and they'll be like, Hey Mark, how you do Like a teenager who visited six years ago. And I'm like, oh, uh, you're, you're, you, you hi. Just lead with John or Sarah. No, see, I'm good at John the. I'm, I'm good with. I can fake it until I make it. Oh wow! I am so good at it, especially if it's a dude, because I can rock man and bro, and I mean, because those are my vo- normal vocabulary. Right. So I can fake it till I make it with names. So very nice. I'm, well, I'm good at it. Well, speaking of names and drinks, uh, Mark, what are we drinking tonight? Tonight we're drinking not the not the Mark Hyde Fuller. No, no, the, no, no, the, the, the Jekyll and Hyde. The Jekyll and we're not drinking the Jekyll and Hyde roast. We're just drinking the Mexican. High grown. That's right. I think this is the best one you've ever done, dude. I think the Mexican high grown, this roast, because it's kind of a, did you do a medium to dark roast this go around? Or was this the light to medium roast? This uh, this was the, um, it's probably medium roast. So this is. I think this is one of the best ones you've done. You haven't had the El Salvador yet. Yeah, wait. You have El Salvador. Yes, I do. Can you get me some Peruvian? Probably. We should have drank Peruvian when we had the Frerix. Duh. I, um, what were we thinking? What were we thinking? Joe and Kimberly Frerichs, missionaries. Oh, because I was in I was in quarantine. You're in quarantine, yeah. so I was drinking Duncan Calf, uh, decaf. I was drinking decaf. Right. So yeah, I mean that's what. But we're yeah, we're drinking, drinking Mexican high grown coffee, and honestly, guys, and eating cookies. This from Martin's. is so good. Like you know, I got my caribou that I drink all the time. I got my which side note, I posted on my Instagram stories and my Facebook stories. I don't know if you saw that where Evie with her. Dang little toddler teeth popped open six different K pods in the course of like seconds. <laughs> like I turned around to do something in the kitchen. I came back and there's just like coffee on the floor. Nice. And then Elliot was like going blah, blah, blah. Like, like I'm like, what happened? But he goes, I ate some. I'm like, buddy, we've talked about this. Like we thought, I don't feel sorry for you. 
We talked about you don't just eat coffee beans, bro. Yes, you do. Chocolate covered coffee beans. Well, okay, from South Bend Chocolate. Okay, that's true. That's true. But I'm like, you don't lick You've up. You've never the... made your own chocolate no. covered coffee. No. no. What's wrong with you, bro? I I I don't know. I do what I do. All right. Well, hey, Mark, do we got any reviews tonight to read? Um, no. I've had some people who have texted me. You know who you select few people are, and they're like, "Oh, I keep meaning to leave a review for you, and I don't." What? No lie. That's uh, unacceptable. That's unacceptable. You know who you are. <laughs> if you're going to leave a couple a review, people's, there's leave a couple it. people's who know who they are. But dude, we've we've gotten the reviews. You know, we still don't know who Mama Yates is, and we still don't know who Volleyball 420 is. They have not made themselves known. Yeah. So if you want to make Sad yourself days. known and let us know so we can send you your RTC mini swag bag, hit us up at realtalkchristianpodcast at gmail.com. Again, that's realtalkchristianpodcast at gmail.com. That was, you that, like that radio voice? That, that was pretty good, Mark. You like that, dude. You <laughs> liked that, didn't you? Well, Mark, let's dive into it, not to rush things along, but I know us. We banter a long time, yep. and I'm trying to keep us semi on track. Why? Why are we trying to keep on track, bro? Because we have so many questions. Tonight is a very special episode, or today, or whatever time you're listening. It is questions from you, our listeners. Yep. From from the listeners. From the themselves. listeners. That's, we're, this is no, no prep on Mark and I's part. We're just going to... Try to answer the questions the best we can. Uh, if we don't get to all the questions, we apologize. Some questions There's we no may way. There's some, no way we can some these. some questions we may save and do a whole episode out of. Yep. Um, so don't feel like if we didn't read your question, and we're just a, skip it out on you. And and how about this too? We'll try to get through as many as we can. So in order to do that, we cannot give full answers either. And, so, and yeah, and. We're going to have to. So we're doing a little, little different tonight. There is going to be no fun fact with Fuller's tonight. Nope. We actually have um, some rapid fire personal questions for Mark and I from a listener. And yep. so, oh, you just grabbed an oatmeal raisin, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was gross. I do not do raisins, bro. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, yeah, we got some uh, personal rapid fire questions from one of our, you, our listeners, uh, that we're going to do in lieu of of fun facts with Fuller. Today. But I gave them a fun fact at the beginning of the episode. So, so they're, they're good. good. They're good. They're good. So but, go ahead, bro. Okay. So I, I'm just going to pick one. I'm going to pick All a right. random one. Okay. You ready for this? I'm going to close my eyes and point when I, I, I'm just. Okay. Yeah, okay. So there. just so listeners know, we have this broken up into the, the rapid fire, just fun, personal ones. We have some that are cultural slash practical, more of like the working of our face or um, some that are, are involved with culture. And then the theological questions, right? That are the the Bible based. We're gonna leave those questions for you, convers- Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these, I don't. I'm not even prepped to talk why, about. You. Why don't but, I just read them to you and you answer them all? Yeah, no, it's not fun, Mark. <laughs> it's not. It's not ask Mark anything. I've done that enough with the teens. But all right, here's a good one. Here's a good one just to start off with. Here's a all softball. Right. Can I be a Christian, but not be part of a local church? Or the, the other way they worded it was, can I be a Christian and be outside of the church? By outside, what do you think that means by outside? And that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like you, you don't feel there's a need to meet with other Christians. Do you? I think of the lone wolf Christian, where it's like, oh, I'm a Christian, but I don't go to church anywhere. That's kind of what I think. So I'll give you my opinion on it. Well, it's and ask RTC yeah, anything, right? So my opinion is is that yes, you can be a Christian, but there's a huge but in there. It's very dangerous because we're not supposed to forsake the assembly of the brethren. And so I, I do think that if you're out there and you maybe a, a new Christian or just haven't found a church that, that fits your jive. Yeah. I said it jive. That's, that's <laughs> like the, that's on the same level of moist. That's the same level as moist, bro. What? What? <laughs> of just weird words that make you cringe. Um, yeah. So, if you haven't found that, you know, that's one thing. But if you're purposely staying away from assembly, now I come from a, a house church background, so um, I don't personally believe that you have to go to a building. But having fellow brothers, or it's like Mark and I and our small group like to call it our tribe, mm-hmm. that is so, so important. And, and the scripture talks about how, was it a thread or was it an arrow? I can't remember what it was. Because I've heard it a couple of ways, but uh, maybe it is an arrow, or I'm going to use an arrow. And what's a single arrow can be uh, easily broken, but a oh, bundle a, a of a thread. Is it a thread? Mm-hmm. So there you go, thread. 
So a thread, a single thread could be easily broken, but a strand or a um, a rope of threads. Yep. Uh, a lay, if you're mechanical, we call those lays, multiple threads. Uh, they are not easily broken. So finding that tribe, finding people that keep you accountable, um, that help sharpen you um, as a Christian, as iron sharpening iron, is so important. It's so important for your protection. I like it. So there you go. That's I like I that answer. All right. I think that suffice. I think that's a good enough answer. All what right. question you got for me? All bro? right, Mark. I'm just going to pick one. Please don't pick the hard one. I'm going to. You already know. You ready for it? No. I'm eating my cookie. Is the Old Testament racist? Is that the hard one you were thinking of? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to answer it, so yep. I gave it to you. <laughs> you know, I've been... I'm going to swallow my cookie. <laughs> I'm stalling if anyone can tell. <laughs> You know, you got the Old Testament, and there's the conversation of the Old Testament God versus the New Testament God. The Old Testament God being one of very judgment and wrath and all these different things. But, you know, so the, where this question comes from is the fact of God seems to be all about the Israelites and screws everybody else that's against him. Um, but what you see in the Old Testament is that God had a chosen people and a chosen race. So And, and why? I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So <laughs> God created at like God created him, you know, Adam and Eve in the garden. And so we're all made in the image of God. Right. But God chose a specific people in order to have the Messiah come through those people. So those people did follow Yahweh. They were the followers of God. However, any person outside of the Jewish community could become part of the Jewish community. They they're called God fear uh, you know, there was God fearing Jews. Um or they were Samaritans. The Samar- well, Samaritans were they well, were dogs. Yeah, yeah, they were I half guess. Samarit- right. like half Jew, half not. They, they were inbreds. But you never ever ever saw God saying this race is better than this one. It was just the fact of you're my chosen people through your seed Abraham. I will bless the entire world through the Messiah. So my the the question I have then, the question is what's I mean racist is so so you said that you, you God chose them. They're my chosen people. Right. Why? Where did that spawn from? Why did He choose them? Abraham had faith. There it is. That's I was hoping you were going to get Abraham to that. I was faith. So it was back in the days of Abraham, there were none really other righteous out there except for Abraham. And that's when God made that promise to Abraham that from him. It was covenant faithfulness. Right, exactly. So from his seed, there would be as many as stars in the sky. Basically. And, you know, when we think of racists, like, like, like what's racism? Because Christianity, I believe that Christians have a very bad track record of of of, of racism and, and dealing with racial um, reconciliation nowadays. but um, That's a love issue. Right, exactly. It's exactly, issue. it's a hard issue. But racism is the fact of, it's the same as like sexis, uh, uh, sexism, sexism, where our race is better than your race for no other reason except our race is just better than your race. Like, you know, white supremacy, which I think is, if, if you're a Christian and a white supremacist, mm, I don't, I have a hard time believing that you can be an actual exactly, Christian. Exactly, thank you. But, um, you, you know, there's even, like, other reversed racism and other things like that. It's the fact of white is better than black. Why? We don't know what just is. We're the gen- – no, 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 Again, no. that's a hard issue. And, and the it- Bible never said Israel was better than the other nations. God just chose to bless the world through Israel. And it was because of Abraham's faithfulness and his yep. obedience that he did that. Yep. But also look at every time that Israel disobeyed God, they ended up in slavery right. <laughs> every time. Every time. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that they've been in slavery more times than any other people throughout history. Right. And so at the end of the day, it was a reward from Abraham's faithfulness. But then God did choose to bless Israel. He didn't say they right. were better than anybody. He right. never once said that you're, you're better than all the nations. It's just through your seed, I will bless the world. Right. So Yeah, but then there's that Old Testament scripture that talks about how he reigns on the just and the unjust. Yeah. And so it's not saying God oh, shows no favors. I'm not just blessing or, you know, just, just Israel. I'm sure he blessed many others. They're just not recorded. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think, like it. I think that was a good answer, man. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. Is it my turn to ask you a question? Go for it. All right. Um, man, I'm just going to do it. Toilet paper over or under. Hey, that <laughs> you're supposed to say that. For them. That's fine. I'll answer. I, that's want, a, that's I, I mean, I, I just want a funny, so, a funny, I want a funny and then I'll do a real one. So about that. there was a, a meme going around on Facebook that had that very same thing, and then they showed, like, the patent. And so I was like... The patent, yep. I'm like, I don't know if that's real. You know, somebody could have just... So I actually went up and looked up the patent, and that is, it's over. The, so it was originally designed to be 
over. But, so that's, but that's the way I always do it. But and, and you use less. You use less TP when it's over than when it's under. Right, because when it's under, you're like you use that extra one or two. But right. with the kids, I went under because they would whack it and spin it around. Ah. And when it's under, it stays connected right. somewhat better versus like wee. Yeah, but it drives me nuts now. I've I've gotten so used to doing it over. Like if I see it under, like if Janiel's just putting a roll on and it's under, like I pull it off and put it over. Dang it, Janiel. It's I, it's just habit for me now. Get, get your crap together, Janiel. But literally. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Oh, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Oh, man. Uh, where is now it? it's too late, Mark. No, it's not. <laughs> it was not too late. <laughs> All right. Uh, does, let's that count see as, here. does that count as my question? Yeah, that was your question, man. Okay. okay. Y- you wasted it. <laughs> um, so, Mark, did God create evil or is evil <sighs> just the absence of God? Are you kidding me? Okay. <laughs> so, this conversation comes from, I, I think there was a passage in Isaiah somewhere that talks about this actually, but it's the effect of did God create evil because God created Satan as Lucifer, you know, that one the chief of angels, the the greatest of greats. So technically did God create evil or does he just allow it to happen? And then the other question is is how does an all-powerful, all-knowing God create this knowing that it would be evil? So therefore he did create evil. You got an answer? No. I got it. You got it? I got it. I mean I have an answer, but you know, because had God not created the being Lucifer, mm-hmm. right? Sin wouldn't have entered the world, right? And we would all be robots. We'd be robots. We wouldn't know good from evil. It's it, it's it's a whole plan laid out that we know it, and we would choose God from our hearts. It's a mm-hmm. heart thing. It's all about that heart and love for God. He wants a people not only that He chooses, but that choose. Him? Does that make sense to you? It, I mean, it does, but at the same time, though, I mean, I'm looking at it where it's, we see that from our view right now. Right. From our seat. Correct. But from his seat as God, who cares if we're robots? Um, you, you know what I mean? I mean, we I, see it from our point of view. I'm, I'm just asking the other so, side. So would you rather, Mark, would you rather have a... I'm trying to think of how to word this. Would you rather have a robot child or would you rather have Elliot? I'd rather have Elliot, 100%. Why? Even though he makes mistakes, why? I mean, he's my son and, and I love him. He, I mean, it's it's a good time. It's There's an emotional yeah, connection, right? there's an emotional right? connection. Even though he screws two. up sometimes? Uh, a lot of times, so yeah. But the times that he doesn't screw up kind of washes away the bad times in a way. Yeah, I mean, they. Yeah, I would say so. So I, and I we see that as parents, but I'm just wondering, it, to it, me, it didn't need to be that way. Uh, I think it. He wanted it that way, though. So then I this, don't think it, it was an, ever about a need. God didn't, doesn't need. He doesn't need us to even exist. So this goes into it. another conversation then of the fact of, and I, I don't remember if this was on the list or not, but this is just me spinballing. Is did God create a world knowing He would send people to hell to be punished for forever? He. You know what I mean? Because if he created a world that we were able to he not created, him, He created free will. He, but and, there's and, an old John w- Owen quote where the only free will that you do is when you sin. Right. So, so well, yeah, but God is not a man that he should lie. He doesn't sin. He doesn't cr- tempt us. He, God does not tempt us. Nope. So to say that God only created the world and knowing that some people were going to go to hell, he, it's like saying I, he, we, he knew that he was going to put a temptation and people were going to fail that temptation. That's what it kind of speaks to me, and I don't think that's God. God said, put something there and said, I think of the Old Testament scripture, it's better to obey than to sacrifice, right? Right, yep. So he put the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden that Adam and Eve would obey because it shows their love for him. Mm-hmm. And that's what he wanted. He wanted that free will. It wasn't that he was trying to tempt them. It was he wanted to... Sh- in See fact, God obedience. never once tempted them. I right. mean, it's it's the fact of there's one tree in the midst of this beautiful garden. It's and, a vast garden. And it, but what was Satan's lie? Satan's lie was is you will be like God. Right. You will know, which is why Satan fell. He wanted right. to be like he wanted to be God. Yep. Uh, his pride, which is why he knew it would work for humanity. Right. <laughs> and it's the fact of you will be like God and know the difference difference between right and wrong. Right. Yep. It is he forgot the fine print. He didn't say the fine print. 
Well, of course not. He, he, the, Adam and Eve did not read the uh, the terms and conditions. But as as a as a well, parent, they did, do you always have to explain? Like, if I told my kids, "You're not watching this rated R movie," and they ask why, because it's rated R. That's all I have to say. Like, you're you're not going to watch it. I mean, when you're an adult, you can make your own choices. Well, it's because there's stuff in there that's not appropriate. For right. You. Exactly. But but they're going to be like, what? Well, I don't have to explain every detail to you. You need to obey. Like, that's the big thing. So. Yeah, there you go. So that did, did God create evil? I would say no. He created a, a perfect good earth right. that we screwed up. Correct. I'd agree with that. And in his sovereignty and his plan, somehow that we don't fully understand. Yeah. I, I hear hard. you. I, I totally agree with you. It's it's The other thing, too, is the there's a theological conversation where it's like superlapsarianism versus infralapsarianism. There you go with the big words. Nobody else understands but you. I know. And I like, That's why I said that's it. it I said it because it's Soche. Uh, we taught the teenagers these words. So Shea don't listen. He's got his own podcast. We'll find out. <laughs> uh, but the fact that did God create the world knowing that this whole thing that Jesus would die, or did God create the world and then when man fell, then and, God, be, then Jesus became planet, And truth you know? be told, these are our opinions. Uh, we're not going to fully know until we're with the Father. So, right. I mean, this is uh, no man will know this fully. We all have our own theological opinion on it. Yep, yep. There you go. All That's, right. All right. Go ahead. Next question. Let me. I'm, I'm writing them down so I can put them in the show notes of which ones we actually did. Is the concept of sin I knew you were gonna do outdated? It. As in, is there a list of things that God hates, or did tradition make up the list? There is sin. Okay. So there, so what is sin? There is sin, and sin is laid out in the scripture. Um. But really, sin is a lack of loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Those were the two greatest commandments that we were told to do. And that encompasses all the Ten Commandments and all the, the laws of the Old Testament, right? So this the, the concept of sin came from the laws that were handed down to Moses and throughout the prophets. It's there was an expectation and they weren't met. Right, exactly. So that's what, here's the expectation and you didn't meet it. That's what we call sin. Um, but through the two commandments that Jesus gave to us, it covered all those laws because it's dealing with the heart. And if you don't love God and you don't love others, if you don't love people, you don't treat people right. So if I love, I do, I do love you, Mark. Oh, thank you. But if I didn't love you, would I care if I hurt you? Would I care if I stole from you, uh, uh, cheated you in some way? You, or, you wouldn't give a crap. Or I mean, you I mean yeah, it. exactly. But because I love you, and as Christians, we're called to love our neighbors, and neighbors being the vast of everything, and even so much so that we're supposed to love our enemies. And and in doing so, we we obey the commandments of of Jesus Christ and the law. <laughs> <laughs> now, I will say, though, that, I mean, I want to go back to another thought, too, but the tradition of the church, I do think the church has made sins that are, quote-unquote, sins that aren't actually sins, the oh, same way that oh, the Pharisees definitely. did. You know, you know, I think of the, the, the Fundy movement, where it, you can't go to movie theaters because that's a sin. You right. can't go to... Even you can't go to concerts. Even oh, let's into rock music. They, right. First of all, why do they always say rock music? Like that's not the only genre out there. For rock these. and roll is from the devil. But apparently, you know, pop punk isn't. So that's good. But <laughs> it's not rock and roll. But they always, I don't know. Funny's always just said rock music, and it's there's there's a thousand more genres. Open dancing. Eyes. Dancing is a sin. Dancing's a sin. Rock and roll music is a sin. All these things are a sin, and it's like. According to whose standard, God's standard right. or your standard? Right. Yep. And so I think that you know, and and this question came from a, and actually from a tweet or an Instagram Instagram comment off one of the meme pages that I follow, and Jagger sent it to me. What's up, Jagger? And um, that was the thing. Oh, I think sin's outdated. The the church has created this weird social construct where blah 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 blah. And it's the fact of, no, there are expectations. There's a truth, a standard that we have to live up to that we don't. Right. I also think that there's something called passive sin, where God commands you to do something and you don't do it. Right. Kind of like Elliot would be like, but daddy, I didn't do anything. Well, right. exactly. That, I told you to right. do it. Right. Like, you know, love your enemies. Right. Bless those who curse you. God commands that. And if you don't do it, oh, uh, crap, I'm preaching to myself. Oh, there it Dang, goes again. Here we go. But that is that a sin? And the answer is like, well, you didn't obey God. So technically, yeah. Right. Yeah, 
Is it an unforgivable sin? No. no. It, it's, I mean, it's still all washed in the blood of Christ. And it was the sins we commit today and tomorrow have already been paid for. Does it mean that we should go out and sin? No, God forbid. But uh, you're not going to, and I saw it on here, can you lose your salvation? You're not going to lose your salvation over hating your brother now if you don't correct that action and that thought process, that heart process. Uh, you could harden your heart and then commit the unforgivable sin. <laughs> so are you saying you could lose your salvation then, Fuller? Uh, I am saying that any real Christian will not lose their salvation. And if you are a Christian that ends up, and I quote air quotes, Christian that ends up committing the unforgivable sin, which we talked about in previ a previous episode, um, I really question whether you were a true follower of the way to begin with. Yeah, I'm looking up the verse in, uh, hey, you can't cheat. We can't use Bible. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was looking up where it's the fact of, uh, yeah, the one who loves his brother or sister remains in the light, and there is no cause of stumbling in him. But the one who hates his brother or sister is in darkness, walks in darkness, and doesn't know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Yep. That was First John 2, uh, there, 10 and 11. Yeah, darkness, but not lo lost our salvation. Right. So you're 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 wandering. You're lost. You you're, you need you still you, need rescued. Forgiveness again. Forgiveness and love is not f so much for the other person. It's for us. It's it's to um, temper our heart. And when we don't do those things, we harden our heart. Uh, and when that happens, then we continue to walk down that path of darkness which could lead us further away from God, I guess, is the best way to put it. Yeah, so let me ask you this, because this... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this a follow-up question to the original question, or are you asking another question? This is the sub-question under the question you just asked yourself. Oh, okay, sorry. Because there's a sub-question, and this is the same person who wrote the sin of, can you lose your salvation? It says, what about people who claim salvation and then rejected Jesus? Like those who were Christians, and they were doing it, they were... And, and, you know, we see in Matthew 7 where it's like, you know, in front of Jesus, oh, we cast out demons in your name. We did all these works. And he's like, depart me, I never knew you. But people who were like, yeah, I love Jesus. I'm sold out. Let's go. Then all of a sudden they're like, nah, I'm out. I chose to walk away. So I would say it comes down to when you look at, here's the, man, it's hard to answer this question because no man can know another man's heart except for God. God can only know a man's heart. Right. So for me to, to say, I know your heart and uh, you weren't saved, you you didn't have the right heart, it's a stretch because you can you can f fake it till you make it as as people say. That right. I, I don't like that word but or those words, but that's just me. <laughs> um, you can fake things for a long time and then eventually the truth will come out. What's done in the dark will come to the light. Right. Um, I would say that true followers of the way would not leave the Savior because they know where they came from and they know who they're with now. But I also look at like the Pharisees and Sadducees who were God-fearing God -fearing men throughout their entire lives throughout everything and yet still denied Christ and that he was the savior and he was the Messiah. Um, and they, they had to have known the truth. They studied the scriptures. They had to have known the truth, mm -hmm. um, but they did not, they, they rejected Christ. And I think that that's more where I'm at. I, I would cool. question whether their heart was really, I, I just think of uh, you're, you're transformed. There's something about when you become a Christian that transforms your heart. Um, not just your outward appearance, but your inward thoughts, the the way you feel about things. They're just different. I, it's hard to explain mm -hmm. for me anyways. Um, but that's that's what I would say. It's it's You don't follow God just to escape hell. Um, and you don't do certain things just because you're scared of what other people will say or looking bad or whatever, like you just naturally don't want to do bad things because you love God. And it's almost, you don't want to disappoint the father, even though people may not know about the sin that you're committing, that you just don't want to disappoint God. 
I guess is where like that's my opinion where I'm at. Like that's how I deal with sin. Like yeah, definitely. I love God so much I don't want to disappoint Him. And and I mean I think you're that way too. We've talked about that in the past about how. <laughs> Um, you didn't like disappointing mom and dad. You know, I think that was episode one or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah, I hated being, I mean, when I was a kid, I didn't care, but as I got older as a teenager, yeah, right. I didn't want to disappoint them. And it's because you loved them. Mm-hmm. And, and it's the same, but a deeper with God. So that was a long answer to a, that should have been a short answer to that question. But <laughs> well, anyways. I, I won't do a follow-up because it's time for you to ask me a question. Oh, you're going to try to do another follow-up? You just did a no, follow-up. No, no, I said I'm not going to do a follow-up oh. because I just um, did a follow-up. Ooh. All right, I got one for you. Uh oh. Okay. If God is going to make a new heaven and a new earth one day, why doesn't He do it already? I actually do have a couple answers for this one. What? Um, first off, um, I don't think God will make a new heaven and a new earth. In terms of a lot of Christians think He's going to destroy this world and build a brand new one. I don't believe that. Because when you really study it, it's the fact of he's going to make all things new. So I think in the same way that he's redeemed people, he's going to redeem the earth. And it's the idea of like it's going to be purified and it's going to be fixed. And like the same earth that we're in is going to be made complete again. That's how I view it. But, which I mean, that's that's what I get from from, from studying how, how the syntax works. And when you look at the rest of the, the, rest of the Bible. What do, you, what do you do with Revelations that talks about the new Jerusalem? It comes coming down. Yeah, it just comes down and boop. It just comes down and boop. Okay. I'm just asking. It's 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 the purification process. Because you see all over the Bible the fact of God's going to purify by fire. Purify when you when you purify something, you're not making it just disappear yeah, and oh hey, here's new gold. Look. It's just like he purified in the flood. Correct. Is he, what you're saying. Correct. Just it's going to be with fire instead of water. So it's the idea because it says the elements will burn. Oh, what, you don't think the whole earth will be destroyed? No, I think this earth was good, and God will make all things new. And he's going to restore the perfect earth that the way it was always supposed to be. That's interesting. Um, I've never thought of it that way, but I could see where you get you're coming yeah. with that. So, but you see in oh goodness, First Peter, Second Peter, where it says that God's not willing that any should perish, but all that all should come to redemption. So why has and this is part part of the Calvinist election conversation? Oh, here too. we go. I won't go too deep. Uh, but you you see that God wants all who the the idea of um, God wants all to come to repentance. That's that's what I was trying to say. That no, none of them would perish. But some of this goes back to your view of the end times. Of do you think the world's progressively getting better? That Jesus will come back when it's all like when the whole world is pretty much Christendom, like Christendized. Is Jesus gonna come back post millennial? Do you think this world's going to hell in a handbasket and we're just waiting for Jesus to come back and fix it? Or do you think that there's no millennium? We're just living until Jesus comes back and then he does it. So some of that is your view based on how you think the end times are going to work, where the world has to get to such a bad point that God comes back and fixes it, or that the world is in such a good place that Jesus is like, like the, we're ready to usher in our king because the whole world is pretty much Christian, or the fact of, you know what, we're called to be stewards and then um, this is the odd mill and then Jesus comes back. So right. a lot of that goes back to I know I just got really theological. It's, it's I, a, I'm following you. Though. It's in the theological. Co- it's in the theological it category is. though. It is. But I think some of it goes back to what's your view of the millennium in terms of when Jesus is going to come back. And so the the, the question though I want to make sure we we hit it the way it was written to us. Um, why doesn't God do it already? And this answer is simple is it's the same as Jesus always answered. It, it's not His time yet. Yep. It's just not his time. I'd agree. It, that, I think that's it. And no man knows the hour nor the day, but the season. Yep. That's the, and but some but this is where it gets confusing because the Bible says, watch for the signs of the times and all these different things, which everyone's like, Oh, Jesus coming back, it's all this, it's prophesy, whatever. And I'm like, Well, that, this was the same thing that happened in World War Two, World War One. That's there, like like you look there, at all of history. There's, there's that's a that's a separate podcast yes. if we're gonna dig into that because actually that's that's like a 20 part series on that <laughs> that but, we could have. But if you said, Mark, look at the sign of the time. This is proof that Jesus will come back very, very soon. I'm like, but the Jewish but people said this. Exactly. Paul said right. this. They've um, been saying, the Catholic Church said it. The, uh, that's um, what the Crusades were all about. The Crusades were all about. The, uh, they the, wanted to make sure they had Jerusalem back for Christ's return. Right. That's and what the whole crusade was the about. Great, the, 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 the plague. Like, right. like like the, right. the the bubonic plague that wiped out was it half of Europe or however many Something it like was? Something like that. The nineteen eighteen, the Black Plague. Right. Uh I mean there's been there's been a lot of things that people are like right, World War One, World War Two, uh the Korean War I've heard. 
uh, just you know, I've been hearing it all my Again, life. It all goes oh, back Y2K. to your view of the seals and the trumpets. Are we living through it right, right. now? Oh, World War II was this trumpet? No, no, no. If if we could figure out the day that which Jesus and God would well, I mean, Jesus is God, but the day that Jesus would come back, God would cease to be God because the Bible says, "Always be ready, right. keep your eyes open, make sure you have your oil well limp, ready to welcome the King in." You know when but I'm, you ain't gonna know when you, he comes. You know when I, I even Jesus didn't know. You know when I'm gonna know. This is my personal opinion, based on scripture. Okay. When I'm gonna know that it's the season. You're dead. No, like, and a season. Good, okay, a season could be a generation. For us, that's 79 years is the average lifespan of an American right now. 79 to 80 years. Okay. So a season. Who knows how long a season actually is? What the what the Bible is referring to as a season. But when the Antichrist, okay, an Antichrist is not like... And this goes back to our view of the tribulation. Right. But when the Antichrist sits on the throne in the temple and proclaims himself as a God. That's when I know, okay, we're in the season. But right now there's no temple on the temple grounds, so I have a hard time believing it's the season. <laughs> and declares to be worshipped. Right, exactly. Yep. Like It's not like the joke you know, with Michael Jordan in The Last Dance where he told Reggie Miller... You don't talk to black Jesus that way. Like, yeah. No, I mean, okay, that was a little sacrilegious there, MJ. But, you know, that's not what it means. Right, right. No, and, this is actually, in, in the, the, the Temple Mount has to be taken back by, by Israel, which it's not. It's There's still a war going on between them and the Palestines over, over the Temple Mount. The Temple has to be built there. And then maybe I'll start looking closer. <laughs> like, oh, and, and again. But even just, then we don't just, know. Again, that's just my opinion from what I gather from the scriptures I'm not saying I'm 100% right because I don't know. Nobody's going to really know, but we are called to be watchmen and have our lamps ready with oil and, and ready to go. Like so, I mean, the Apostle Paul thought that Jesus was coming back right. very soon. Right. That was 1,800, 1,900 years ago. Right. Years so, ago. I mean, yeah. And a lot of it goes back to your view of the tribulation, too. Right. Because, like, I'm a post-trib guy. I think we'll live through the seven years of the Great Tribulation. You're a pre, pre-wrath, pre-wrath, pre-wrath view. Yep. And then we got no pre pre trips. Uh, well, on this podcast, not on this podcast. I was gonna say I, my my wife was brought up pre trip. Oh, we but all she's, were, but she, I wasn't. I wasn't oh, brought up pre trip. See, I was brought up pre trip because that's not what I mean. That's what Left Behind told us. Yeah, that, right, right. So. Well, and that's the way my wife was brought up. But she she's actually been digging through, like reading Revelations, reading Jeremiah, reading Isaiah, reading like all these prophets digging into it right now, trying to formulate her own opinion rather than mm. just the opinion that was given to her by her parents and pastor. Oh, I got some good systematic theologies over there for her. Oh. So, well, but either way, so anyways, go ahead. Um, is, it, is it your que- question? That was the, it's your if question. God was going to make yep. you have a new earth one day, why yeah. doesn't he already do that? Right. So, so it's your turn to ask me okay. the next question. Hey, um, hmm. we also have, that thing over there. I, I'm going to mention that's the next one we're going to go oh, with. Oh, okay. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. Our, our little mystery pile. Okay. Here's a fun one. Is it okay for dudes to wear makeup? Oh. <laughs> I was wondering when this one was going to be asked. Is it okay for dudes to wear makeups? So I would say, uh, depends. Ah, uh, like, like the diaper? Yeah, like the diaper. No, it depends. You sound like me, though, bro. Like, yes and no. I know some some dudes, and I've done it myself. You get a, you know, especially a teenager, you get a pimple. You ask your mom, hey, mom. But that's not make. I'm, mom, I think they're talking like, 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 you know. Full blown, some, like full-blown, like. Like, uh, get oh, it. um. Okay, who, I'm going to give James, you. James Charles. I'm going to give you my opinion. Okay. And a lot of people aren't going to like it. Okay. A- and my opinion is, is that what God creates is good and perfect. So I really don't see the need for anybody to wear makeup, not just oh, dudes, oh, but girls. Oh, so you're going the other, okay. That's just my opinion. Now, am I going to make up shame somebody? No. You like how I did that rather than fat shame? I like shame? that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm not going to, I don't look down on people that do it. I just think that what God creates is perfect and that there's a natural beauty um, in women that, that, society and the culture has said you need to hide mm. and that's just my opinion okay so that's kind of where i stand so do i think guys need to do it no same reason because that's my opinion i don't think girls need to do it i don't think guys need to do it you so just took that conversation to the upper story man like you raised the level on that you weren't like no or yes you were like well i don't really think everybody you know right so that's Dang. just that's my opinion on it 
Wow. Okay. I was not got, expecting that. Do you got any follow ups with yeah, that? Yeah, I do. Go for it, buddy. Uh, I mean, you know, you have like the news reporters and all those people who, I mean, they wear makeup, but that's what they that's, don't look like pale and dead. Yeah, that, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's different. different. But the people who wear makeup, there's people say, on stage that do like Broadway and stuff. They wear makeup yeah. because of the light shining on that. And that's the reason is so that or to play reflecting. a character right. or whatever, you know, so that's different. That's different. I mean, personally, I, I don't like girls who wear heavy, heavy, heavy makeup. I don't either. And that's, I, I like that. I mean, now my, I, I do think it's a lot of women because I've, I've we're two dudes here talking girls. I'm sorry. So, sorry. So if you, if you if we say something that that I just that I, you get mad about love covers a multitude of sins. That's I personally I have always found found girls more attractive that wore less or no makeup. That was just my opinion. And, I agree. And, and but I do. Th- I mean, I talked with somewhere. I'm like, well, why do you even wear the amount that you do? They're like, well, it just makes me. I I, I like it. It just a makes lot, me feel a little. Better. A lot of it has so to like, do okay. with confidence. Yeah. I feel more confident, and it's like, why? I mean, it, it, and that's a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother you got to dig in. Dig into your past and figure out the whys. Why do I do this? Why do I act? But I do like, but even like, uh, I like the natural makeup lines where it's like, you know, if girls want to like, okay, make their cheekbones look a certain way. I know some are very concerned about like, especially teenagers and like college kids with acne and wanting to cover that up and other things too. But, but again, that's God made beauty, like beauty's a beauty in the eye of the beholder. Right. B, why would you want to put on a fake face for someone to fall in love with your fake face? Like, right. And then now you got to that's imposter maintain syndrome. That, and then right. you got to maintain the fake face. And then it's like, why are you doing it? I mean, is it attention? Right. Is it all different things, you know? Yeah, yeah. Same. And actually, that's the same idea with dudes who are very insecure, who have massive muscles. They're right. trying to hide their insecurity behind their muscles. Right. I called you out bodybuilders. What about the fat people? I'm just kidding. I'm they looking. Did. I'm looking up down at myself. <laughs> hey, I've lost weight though. So you look good. Bro. All right, you look good. Oh no. Oh so, no. Okay. So we won't go too long. I, I, all right. So Mark asked me a question. Uh-huh. He goes, Fuller. Look, let's do a question episode. And I'm like, dude, I'm down for it. Like, I want to hear from our listeners. I want to know what they're thinking. I would rather have these talks Man, more we didn't than even what answer we, all of them. I mean, I would more. love to continue having these conversations and having questions pour in that we can actually discuss and talk about and answer um, rather than just us constantly having to try to come up with stuff because we don't know what you guys want to listen to. Like, what, what, what are your questions? Like, I encourage you guys to continue to write us questions, and we will continue to do our best to, to answer the questions. But Mark asked me to ask my wife to write down some questions to bring tonight. And so I, I asked Janelle, I said, hey, can you, can you write down a few questions? And she's like, uh, yeah, sure. I did not tell her that it was going to be a rapid fire question episode. <laughs> so she wrote down questions that were supposed to be like full length episodes. So I don't know if we're going to get to these. Tonight, and, and, and we, neither one of us have read these yet. I'm just going to go and read number one. Like, like there's number three, there's number two, there's number one. I'm going to start with one. Okay. Cause we're already, we're already running. Well, well, we'll cover up two and three. So we don't see two and three. All right. I'll okay. cover it up the best I can. All right. I'm a, I'm a little nervous because she's like, oh, this is probably going to be. So we'll try to answer it as best we can. And then if. Show us grace, Janiel. Yeah. Show us grace. All right. Question one. Why is the old. Te- uh, why in the Old Testament did men have so many wives, but many of those men were considered to be great men of God? Oh, OK. So polygamy. OK, sister wives. OK. So, I mean, we do watch okay, sister, sister wives. wives. OK. <laughs> All right. So, Mark, do you want to take that one or you want me to? Just because the Bible says something doesn't mean it's right. Well, I mean the Bible is full of facts. It's 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 historical narrative. I mean, you look at King Solomon; he had well, over, over four hundred wives, I believe. Right. Well, what's your little What's your little Solomon? Oh, joke. Oh man, I got to try to remember. It was from when I was a kid, so it was. Uh, if uh, Solomon was so no, wise, yeah. why did he have so many wives? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. If, yeah. If King Solomon was so wise, why did he have so many wives? But it is true where you see, and this is interesting because the Old Testament never one time had said that it was bad that any of these guys had more than one wife. And actually it started like you could first start seeing this with, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Abraham and Sarai, a- Abram and Sarai and Hagar. Yep. That's where you first see it because Sarai is like, take my hand maybe because I can't produce you a child. And that was cultural. That that was actually a normal cultural thing. But was it cultural for Christians? Well, like, that's, well you mean like like followers of God? Yeah, followers of, yeah, exactly. I won't even say followers of the way. It's and followers that's it. Of God. Just because the Bible says something doesn't mean it's right. A lot of the Old Testament is filled with, with stories that kind of walk through some struggle. It was real. It it's was real life, man. It was real talk, Christian. 
<laughs> right. Like, I mean, you see Lot had one yeah. wife. You see Abraham had one wife. Right. Just because David... And da- now, David was a man after God's own heart. He had all these different wives. Correct. Now, the Bible did not necessarily ever say, David, this was... I mean, what he did with Bathsheba and, and yeah. that that was not okay. Yeah, right. But um, you never ever see God say, oh, it was bad. So I know some people who are like, well, God never said it was wrong. So, you know, right. multiple wives isn't a bad thing. But I'm also like, bruh. You can't even handle one. <laughs> bra, bra. <laughs> bra. Why would you? No. I, I don't think. Um, and the, Paul in the New Testament, that's where it gets confusing because Paul said an elder should be a husband of what? One wife. Which now I think, now that's another conversation about what does that one wife mean. But it's the fact of you're a, you're a one woman guy. Like you got one wife. You're not right. having a, right. you don't have a wife for babies. And then, you a know, concubine then side, and, right. you know, you don't want little side chicks on the side where you get, uh, where that's where you get your sexual pleasure. Then the right. wife just cooks you. Well, they don't cook you. They give you PB and J's and pop out babies. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, what it was. And that's what it was in Ephesus. So, Gino, I hope we, we semi covered that question for you. We can dig into it We're not it even more. prepared to have that. Co- I mean, that's I mean, like, that's a, that's a huge theological study. Like, uh, yeah. Anyways, Dang. it seems like that's our like, oh, I, uh, we don't know what to say. So we're just going to be like, oh, that's a future episode. Or that's a theological study. That's like our go to saying. But it's really it really is. It's I mean, true. that's that's the thing. It's it's hard to kind of answer some of these questions without really getting into it. And we don't have much time left. Oh, are we doing number two? Let's let's do number two. We're going right. to just try to hit these things out because. And again, we're just going not? quick. We're not doing deep dives. Right. So why does the church need programs and all the fancy things if the beginners of the church did not need them to find believers? Janelle, are you oh. trying to make us fight? Are you trying to this make us fight? This must be the fight? one that she said, you guys will disagree on this one. Uh, I think we've kind of covered this question, though, in our denominations. And, it, and the purpose of the worship service a little bit. Right, yeah. We kind of touched on this several times throughout a couple episodes. Um, obviously. Mark being Mark and everybody that doesn't know Mark, I am sorry because he's a wonderful guy, but, uh, I'm very charmed, <laughs> but we do disagree on this one. Uh, I do not find anywhere where I need, or I see a need for fancy church programs. And Mark thinks that, um, though, you, you they, actually they, might not know what I think about though, this one. Though they are not needed, Essential. they help. They're very helpful. Right. They're, now, they're a tool say, in the tool belt. I will say, though, that churches put too much time, effort, money into their own programs and not enough into the things that actually matter, like outreach right. and taking care of the poor, right. the widow, the See, orphan. I basically had what you were going to say. I do so, know you a little bit. Oh, I just realized right. we never answered that one question about the widow and the orphan. We'll get back to that one later. Oh, okay, yeah. That's, uh, a, that's a fun uh, well, one. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to go too much longer because nah. we're... That may be one we we're trying up. to be nice to you listeners right All now. All right, so we're going to do question three, last question, and then we'll go to rapid fire. I like it. All right, I like last it. Last question because I don't, I haven't read it yet, and I see a scripture in here, so I'm really concerned. My wife, she likes to challenge us. Uh, Isaiah, and not in the way like she disagrees, but just likes <laughs> to give us a challenge. Uh, Isaiah twenty nine thirteen says, "These people say they are mine. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me." And their worship of me is nothing but man-made rules learned by something rote. I don't know what you she was. You can't read your wife's handwriting. It's, it looks like an R, an O, a T, and an E. By rote. Was Janiel homeschooled? I don't know. Pull up Isaiah twenty nine thirteen. Well, was Janiel homeschooled? Yes, she was. Yeah, homeschoolers don't know how to spell. Uh, oh, um, just kidding. Okay, you and your Sith graders. Shut up. <laughs> I didn't say talk. I said spell. we can. We can't spell, but you can't speak. <laughs> I anyway. can't spell either. Okay, so uh, my phone just crashed. Okay, there we go. So where am I going, Isaiah? Isaiah where? 29, 13. What is, I mean, it may be a, I don't know what version she was using. Read it real fast, though, because she's got another one. Okay, here we go. Uh, Isaiah 29, 13. 29. I was in the wrong chapter. You want me to pull it up in the King Jimmy real fast? Nope. Uh, the Lord said, these people approach me with their speeches to honor me with lip service, yet their hearts are far from me, and human rulers direct their worship of me. Okay. She might have gotten distracted. I don't know. I don't know what. Okay, so let me continue on with the question. Because that was. Uh, then in Mark 7, 6 through 8, she just wanted to put a mark in there for you, buddy. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Jesus repeats thank this you. saying, Isaiah was right. Uh, repeats this saying, Isaiah was right when he prophesied this. 
How do people distinguish man-made traditions or rules in the church from God's now in the present day church? That goes to another question that was asked that I actually, I don't think I put that one in the, in the show notes of what are modern day idols? So how do people distinguish man-made traditions? I don't think they're talking, she's talking about idols. She's talking about traditions. Just traditions that we like, do. Like Easter Sunday services, a tr- church tradition. It just happens to be that we, it's a remembrance of right. something. Um, not that, that it's a bad thing. It's just a tradition. It's a church tradition. There was nothing God made about yeah. it. But and I don't think all traditions are bad. No, and I don't think all traditions are good. Uh, right. Correct. So how do we? How do people distinguish man-made traditions or rules in the church from God's from God's now in the present day church? You mean go for it? Or you want to go for it? So I would say uh, tradition. Chin Hill is going to be like, that's not what you said six years ago when we were dating. Because <laughs> I used to hate traditions. And and now I've grown, since I've been with Janiel, I've grown more of an appreciation for for traditions. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say that man-made traditions have to be taken on a case-by-case. Case. Like, um, we know God, one of God's traditions uh, is um, keep the Sabbath holy. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's a God tradition. Uh, it's a commandment. I'd say, I'd, I'd say it's, it's stronger than a tradition. That's but, a commandment. But define tradition. Tradition is when you do something repetitive, repetitively, right? Over over many, many years. Right. So that's a tradition, correct? That's what correct. even man-made traditions are. So the Sabbath is a tradition in the sense of the word. If we go by that, mm. if we go by that definition. It's, I get, I, we I agree where, that. I know where you're trying to go, though. We agree that it's a commandment. But anyways. Um, now, how you honor the Sabbath Right. That could be considered tradition. Keep the Sabbath and keep it holy. How do you keep it holy? Well, then you make the decision. Well, oh, this is just how and we then keep it our, holy. What, I mean, we as a modern-day Western culture church don't, most of us don't keep Shabbat. Nope. Uh, most of us don't keep uh, the Passover feasts. Nope. Um, or, or many of the other feasts. I actually have a book of all the biblical feasts at home. Uh, and the, I would say those are Jewish traditions. Those are Jewish traditions need, that we could we to. we could do them. We don't have to. I I, I mean the Sabbath was man the, wasn't made for the Sabbath, but Sabbath was made for man because we are it was rest. It's rest. Right, it's right. Just rest. That's the way we were made. We need a day of rest, mm-hmm. and that's why it's there. Right. Um. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, and I agree with you. It's a command. I was just trying to use it for. I, I know what you're trying to go. <laughs> with. I know what you're trying to go with. But I, I don't think all man uh, man made traditions are bad. But I don't think all man made traditions are good either. Like, like, well, I'll disagree with you a little bit here, Mark. I don't think Halloween is a good man-made tradition, in my oh, opinion. But the candy. <laughs> he said, but the but candy. The, but the sugar. Anyways, but uh, that's just an example. And, yeah, Mark, we don't have to get into that. We've already had that conversation. But uh, I, I don't think traditions are bad unless they keep you from honoring God and following his ways. Okay. I guess that's where my opinion's at. You know, I think as Protestants, we do a really good job talking about the Catholic traditions. Because, in fact, I mean, the Catholic Church, I was watching an interview of a Protestant just asking Christ, a, a Catholic priest questions. The Bible and tradition are on the same playing field, but if one ever has to trump the other, guess which one wins? Oh, the, the Catholic Church's the, tradition. The, the Church's traditions and the, the traditions of the sacraments. Right. And, and how they do worship and mass and all these different things that are traditions. And right. all of a sudden, I mean, like, I, honestly, you know, I used to hate traditions. I was the, 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 the emo punk pop rock, like, Me too, man. like stick it I to had, the man type I the stu- music. I had know. the studded belts and the studded wristlets. Yes, and sir. I had the, and, and holy, I, had, I had the white belt too. And see, I never did the white. I had the skinny green day ties. I had the, I had, I did the ties. Yep. I did the jeans and a black t-shirt most times. And then I wore the like fabric wristbands, yep. and then I always had uh, what is it called? It was a stocking cap, but it wasn't called a stocking like like a winter hat, but it wasn't a winter hat. A beanie. A beanie. There you go. Did you have the one with the with the bill built into the beanie? I had one of those, I and too. I had like one where it was like a skater's emblem or whatever. Right. So yeah, I was like, oh, screw tradition. This, this, and this, and this. Right. And you know, you think of tradition as like the, the 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 Puritan Book of Common Prayers. You think of a lot of these other traditions that have been passed down. And even how, like, you know, someone once asked, oh, does Southside have any traditions that we do? And I yeah, think, yeah, BBS. we do. 
Well, VBS. That's a tradition. Yeah, sure, it's a tradition. I, I also think of like a child dedication or parent dedication. Yeah, Maybe yeah. That's and they're and those are good things. Those are great that's a things. Tradition. I mean, if we we're going to do it according to the way that Israel did it, we'd have to do the dedications eight days after birth, and we shouldn't name them until the eighth day. That's true. That's true. And but you know, you you think of who Jesus was talking to in this culture, right? All right, let's let's back up a little bit. He was talking to Israel people who they were commanded to even keep these traditions. So right. I don't think Jesus is saying traditions were bad. He was saying, what's your heart behind it? Right. Exactly. What's the heart behind it? Because the Bible said, you know, pretty soon people won't worship me in a place, but they'll worship me in spirit and in truth. Right. And, you know, God, that's the same idea of, of your lip service. is. Go- and I think we focus so much on tradition, but it's the fact of you just say these things, but you don't mean it. And, you know, right. and this is why... Um, the, the, the conversation, and this is one reason why a lot of more conservative, um, I would say traditional churches prefer hymnals over words on the screen. Because when right. you have a hymnal and you understand how to read music, you could pretty much sing every song. And they're all different. You're not stuck with the same song. Because if you do the same song over and over and over and over, eventually does it just become repetitive and you don't remember what you're singing anymore. I like the hymns and song books just because I can read ahead and know where I'm at. Rather, than, ha- at. rather than having to wait for the words to I- that's one thing that irritates me. I'm sorry, Mark. I know it's mostly you, you that put it up there and deal with it, but I hate the like single lines because it's like, uh, because I don't always remember the, especially when right. we're learning. Well, they're supposed to trigger Anyways. them a little faster than yeah, what they, they never do. do. It's always a lag. It's like I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but that's but just because I mean, because the 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 Jewish people though, we gotta remember right. this is just because something is tradition doesn't make it bad. Right. Um, the nor, book, nor the does book of Common Prayers isn't a bad thing. Right. In fact, I know a lot of people who read out of the Book of Common Prayers every single day, and they right. read out of these readings. But it's the fact of 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 why are you doing it, and are yeah. you worshiping God with your lips? You know, I look at all these people. That I, I'm gonna, ooh, I'm gonna go at some people. Okay, here we go. So you look at churches. Um, there's a there's a big church in our our community. There's a couple yep. of big ones, and if like, I've been a part of their worship services, yeah, and so if you're fun. a part of it. Who are the people that are most engaged in in the worship and getting into it? It's the first couple rows. You have thousands of people behind them that are singing the songs, hand in their pocket. They don't really care. Uh, they might listen to a message, well, but do I nothing mean, with it. So the question is, you get, are you there just to check off the spiritual checklist of like, all right, God. But you got to remember, because like, you know? I've been to them too in the service I went to, their altar call was a uh, hello from the other side by Adele. So, yeah. I mean, really. <laughs> I'm not thinking, I'm thinking of the other church, not that oh, gotcha, church. I'm okay. not thinking that church. I'm, I'm thinking one that actually is, is theologically sound. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I had to mute it so I could say what church it was. Um, but, you know, but I look at it, and even our own church, like we have people who stand there who who – you you look at them and it's like okay I I know the life you're living, but you 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 do this in front of people at the church, but then you turn around and I'm like, man, your life doesn't look look nothing like what you just sang, right? Look, like nothing that you just did, and it's kind of the idea of, you know, um, and maybe this is is me thinking of of a lot of things that are back in the church where, you know, we've had a lot of pastors at mega platforms that have fallen. And I mean, there it's no question. Perry or that Noble, are still on the platform, James but McDonald, aren't, they're not that need to be knocked off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Joel Olstein. <laughs> Listen, it's just for Jesus. And don't worry. Jesus loves oh, you. Goodness. No matter what you do, Jesus just, you are there called, you. you are blessed. You are don't worry, to live your best life right now. Believe and you will have that Ferrari. <laughs> now nah, that's, uh, that's Joyce Myers. <laughs> uh, uh, Keflo dollar, right? Or whatever his first name uh, is. That way. That's, uh, I don't know. So whatever dollar who had the TD TD T. D. Jakes. Uh, yeah, but he does that a little bit. But yeah, a lot. Of anyways, but anyway, but let's let's wrap this up, Mark. But, what I was trying to say though out. is, you got these pastors who they would preach from the pulpit. They right. would they would have these oh such a wonderful ministry, but on the backside, and Jane McDonald mishandled millions of dollars. He right. was considered a bully, a jerk, uh, all these different things, and he lived differently than what he taught. Right. And how many of Christians, and this is a challenge for me because the Bible said, I brought it up already, Matthew 7, where, you know, um, people come to me and said, oh, I cast out demons in your name. Look at the works I did. I did miracles. I did, th- Jesus, look what I did for you. And Jesus goes, depart from me. I never knew you. Right. Yep. Whole. Oh, yeah. As a pastor, as a communicator, as a leader, right. that's a gut reality check. That was just, I mean, that, that puts it right into perspective of you can do the work for Jesus, but are you a follower of Jesus? 
And it's so all I, it's all about the heart. It's, it's, the heart. it's all about the inside, not the outside, and what the and, outside does. And obviously, you know, we, this was oh, we talked about the tongue, where the tongue is just a printer. I think the tongue's right. just a printer. Whatever comes out of your mouth is a reflection of what's on the inside. Right. So. Yep, I agree. All right, well, let's wrap, ready this to wrap up. it up. Let's wrap it up with the rapid fire. Mark, I'm going to hit you first. If we can both answer, we have no more than 15 seconds apiece. We each get that's 30 seconds for each question. Does that sound fair? Rapid fire? Sure. Let's 15 go. 15 seconds. We'll hold us both to it. That way I don't get, well, Mark only got 10 words and you had like 10 <laughs> points. So I, I don't want to hear that again. <laughs> I that mean, was the soulmate episode in he, case you missed it. He made it. me write the episode, so I figured I was going to write it the way I wanted. But uh, all Find right, Mark. Find a spouse and love their socks off. <laughs> all right, give it to me. What's the first one? On a PB&J, do you put the peanut butter on only one side or on both? If I'm eating it right then, it's peanut butter and jelly. That's it. But if I'm putting it in my lunchbox for later, it's peanut butter, butter on the other side, and then jelly in the middle so the jelly won't seep through the bread. See, I do a triple layer. Oh, so okay. The first okay. two slices are peanut butter, peanut butter, and then both slices are both sides of the third piece are jelly. Wait, you do like you it. do like a, a like a Big Mac for PB yeah. and J? Yeah, it's good. Oh, I know so, what I'm doing after this. All right. All right. So, anyways, Mark, uh, favorite is. podcast outside of RTC? Um, I got two. I got the Carry New Off Leadership Podcast and the Amy Poterfield uh, Marketing Secrets. Mine is the uh, Ask Pastor John. Oh, that's a good one. John Piper. And uh, the du- or the uh, Dudes and Dads, which we did a mashup with. Yep. And the last one would probably be the Dad Tire with Jared Lopes. I know you're going to say that one. Okay, and I want to make sure I get this one right. So the Amy Poterfield, not a Christian, but online marketing made easy. And I forgot, I listen to Unbelievable every week, too, with Justin Briley there out of England. So there you go. go. All, right. All right, let's move on. Uh, this, I'm, I'm starting with you. I'm starting with oh, you. Oh, dang it. I was trying to get you. All right, go ahead. You cannot say Pastor Scott. Who's your favorite pastor to listen to? Or pastor preacher? Mark. No. Oh, bro. <laughs> no. Okay, my turn. Nope, 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 nope. And you're <laughs> muted because that was a beautiful answer, so you can't answer anymore. No, I'm kidding. So besides your, this wonderful human being. Uh, favorite preacher to listen to is probably going to be Francis Chan. Oh, yep, That's yep. That's my boy. See, my boy is J.D. Greer and Matt Chandler. I knew you were going to say them. J.D. Greer and Matt Chandler. All right. I love David Platt, but he sounds like he's going to cry the entire sermon. I can't handle that. All right. Favorite current worship song? Oh, can we have two? You can have as many as you want, buddy. All right. Christ is Mine Forevermore by City of Light. Yes, I Will by Vertical Worship. That's good. My, I don't listen to current uh, music. Christ is Mine Forevermore. I about cried in a coffee shop. Uh, just saying. Just saying. Uh how great you are! Oh, sovereign one, grace—the one that Soche did. Soche did. Dude. I really like that one. And in tenderness are my two. Oh, in tenderness is a bop. And Look, guess, and both of them were brought to me by Brandon Soche. Guess what? This is gonna be different time recording. We're doing both of those this Sunday. That's awesome. I, I'm looking forward to watching it. All right, b- all right, here we go. Let's go. Uh, favorite book, nonfiction and fiction. So one of each. <sighs> okay, so I don't do a lot of fiction, but the one yeah. that I really fell in love with is I. I think it's over there on my bookshelf. It's, ca- it's called The Light of Eden. Um, I don't remember who wrote it. It's about a medieval guy and it's set where he thought he was following quote unquote the way, but right. the, the flame, but the flame was actually that, that book's version of Satan. It, it was, it was weird. It was really weird, but it was really cool. Uh, my favorite nonfiction book though. Oh, geez. Um, I'm like, you can see my eyes like, I know I'm scanning. glad I asked you because at least I got some time to think about it. I'm looking at my bookshelf right now. Um, the one I probably have enjoyed the most um, is The Cross of Christ by John Stott. Nice. And that, that one was pretty solid. Good. All right. I'm always good for a little So little let's move on. Does, let, let, let's move on. Now. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. My favorite nonfiction book would probably be Fasting by Jensen Franklin. Oh, that's, that's the one you bought me, right? That is. Yeah. I thought uh, you were going to say Letters to the Church. That's my second favorite. Mm, okay. But okay. I had to go favorite. My favorite fiction is probably Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. Not Two Towers. Not Two Towers. Return of the King is my favorite. I heard that was like the worst one. Like ah, it's see, slow. I liked it. it. It's a little slow, but I liked it. So. All right. All right. Go ahead, man. Favorite movie of all time. Favorite movie of You're all gonna time. You're going to love mine. Ooh, that's a, that's a rough one. Um... It's changed a lot through the years. So, like growing up, oh, you can have two. You can have an animated and a non-animated. Ooh, ooh, that like 
That makes it easier for me. Yeah, because you're going to go Lion King one and a half. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Lion King one, dig a tunnel. I, I guess if I had to go animated, it would probably be Aladdin. Ooh, okay. And non-animated, it would probably be either 13 Hours or American Sniper. I have 13. Oh, no, no, I don't have 13 Hours. I almost, I, I had it, and then I got rid of it. I don't remember and, what it was. And 13 Hours is about the 13 Hours over in, um, yeah, I can't think of it now. Mm-hmm. Benghazi. Oh, no, that, I was thinking of a different movie. I haven't yeah. seen that one. American yeah. Sniper, though, that was the other one? Yep. That was pretty solid. Yeah. So my, those are mine. My quote-unquote all-time, I barely ever watch it, is Braveheart with Mel Gibson. TV edited edition. I want to make sure our listeners hear that. No boobs. <laughs> no boobs. I'm just going to say it. No boobs, no butts, no... You know my yeah. kids will listen to this, right? <laughs> Real talk. Real talk. <laughs> but the TV edit one, where it cuts out all I'm the I'm going to TV edit you from now on. <laughs> Sorry, Janiel. Uh, the, uh, the good thing they're young. Um, but the other one that I love is Mighty Ducks. Oh, dude, I didn't think of that. D1, baby. Oh, yeah, that's the best one out of the D, three. I like I D2 think, a little bit, but D1's the GOAT. D3 was... Eh. D2, though, with Team USA, when you yeah. got a... Uh, Fight uh, Russia. No, well, was that, Russia. Uh, nickel puck time. Oh, um, you know what movie I didn't think of? He's was. the SNL guy. Anthony, no. He also did uh, Good Burger. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Russell is what his name was in the ah, movie. I can't think what it is. But anyway, but Mighty Ducks D1, bro. That's that's probably one of my you favorites. Know, you know another great movie is Miracle? Oh, I love Miracle. Man, that's such a good Any movie. sports movie, dude, Invincible, Solid. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, The Coach Rookie. Carter, the, the Rookie. Rookie's phenomenal. Was with, uh, Glory Road. With, with the uh, rookie. Dennis Quaid. Dennis, Dennis Quaid, yep. The Glory, oh, Glory Road. Road. Uh, remember the Titans? Oh, yeah, how can we forget that? Hey, Janiel, that? I'm just going to steal your hubby for a weekend, and we're going to watch all the movies. <laughs> She'd probably be like, uh, why don't you just come over and we'll all watch them together? Because she's she loves those types of movies, too. Are so. you kidding? Like, 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 no joke. I'm No joke. I'm serious. She loves... We just watched The Rookie like a week and a half or two weeks ago. Screw this. I'm going to Fuller's house tonight. Okay. Uh, last, <laughs> we have cookies. <laughs> oh, oh, we already answered the last one. Already, I was hyped up for the last one. I know, because you you jumped into it. Pull, pull, pull a last question out of your pocket. Um, favorite outdoor activity. I already know what it's going to be. Mowing. That. Oh, okay. I was going to say that's not a sport. That's so. not a sport. Well, no. Okay. Um, that's not a sport, bro. That's like all. I mean, oh, whatever. Uh, but no favorite outdoor activity. I. I mean, I guess you. I love mowing, dude. I love mowing. See, that's not really an activity though. I like sitting out by a campfire. Oh, see, I love campfires except for the smell. I don't like smelling like campfire when I'm Oh, out. that's the best smell. Oh, I'm a city that's boy. That's why I like charcoal. We, we, I mean, we do campfires like once a week out here. But, yeah. but now I, would, I would say I love, I thoroughly in, enjoy mowing. So, all there right. There you go. Yeah, so there you go. Instead of the fun facts, we had the rapid fire fun answers with Mark Hyde and Chris Fuller. Um, well, as you can tell, I hit the wrong pad. Look at that. Listen to this, guys. <laughs> <laughs> They're laughing at me. They're laughing. <laughs> well, see, you see, guys, I have a, here we go. I have a, a big pad in front of me, and it was on the wrong screen. So instead of the outro, it started playing the laugh. So, <laughs> well, but, but you know, since we had the fun, uh, fun rapid fire questions, the laughter, I guess, just made sense. Oh, there you go. It just we made We should have sense. had, it was just a little delayed. Well, you know, there's a lot of questions that we didn't get to that, um, you know, we still have, like, Eight questions here that we didn't even touch, dude. Might Maybe have we'll have do. another day. We're going to keep yeah. these for another day Definitely. for another time of Ask RTC Anything. But we appreciate you guys so much. We want to hear from you. So reach out to us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Real Talk Christian uh, Podcast. For all of those, you can listen to us with realtalkchristianpodcast.com or anywhere podcasts are listed, or, as well as the email, realtalkchristianpodcast at gmail.com. Before we go, any last thing you want to say, Fuller? Nope. All right, guys. Well, until next time, take it easy. Thank you for listening to Real Talk Christian. To help get our podcast into the ears of other people who need to hear these conversations, we would love for you to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. To keep the conversations going, feel free to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and share our content with others. See you next time.